I think the thing I find most peculiar about this story is that nobody seems to be particularly bothered about the fact that Toad has escaped from prison. What do you think? The Battle for Toad Hall Toad awoke in the wood feeling cold, hungry and very lonely. But as he sighed and blew and stared before him, he saw some bright small things shine and twinkle and move towards him. As it approached, a face grew up gradually around it. A familiar face. It was Ratty. Toad, said Rat when they arrived at his little riverside home, go upstairs at once and take off that old cotton rag. Clean yourself thoroughly and put on some of my clothes and try and come down looking like a gentleman, if you can. By the time Toad came down again, lunch was on the table, and while the two animals ate, Toad told Rat all his adventures. Rat listened in silence until at last he said, Now, Toady, I don't want to give you more pain after all you've been through, but... Go on, Ratty, don't spare me. What is it? You mean to say you don't know? About the stoats and weasels? And how they've... taken Toad Hall? Toad leaned on the table, resting his chin on his paws. A large tear welled up in each of his eyes, overflowed and splashed down. Plop, plop. Go on, Ratty, murmured Toad. Tell me all. The worst is over. I can bear it. Well, one dark night, a band of weasels, armed to the teeth, crept up to the front entrance of Toad Hall. At the same time, a body of ferrets took over the backyard and offices, while a company of stoats occupied the conservatory and billiard room. And they've been living in Toad Hall ever since. Oh, have they? said Toad, getting up and seizing a stick. I'll jolly well see about that. It's no good, Toad, called Rat after him. You'll only get into trouble. But Toad marched rapidly down the road, his stick over his shoulder, fuming and muttering to himself till he got near to his front gate. Suddenly there popped up from behind him a long yellow ferret with a gun. Who goes there? Stuff and nonsense, said Toad very angrily. What do you mean by talking to me like that? Come out at once or I'll... The ferret brought his gun up to his shoulder. Toad dropped flat on the road and bang! A bullet whistled over his head. The startled Toad scrambled to his feet and scampered off back to Ratty's as fast as he could. What did I tell you, said Rat? They've got sentries posted everywhere and they're all armed. You must wait. Just then there came a heavy knock at the door and in walked Badger. His shoes were covered in mud and he was looking very rough and tussled. He shook Toad by the paw and said, This is a poor homecoming, unhappy Toad. Then he turned his back on him and sat down at the table. Presently there came another knock at the door and in came Mole, very shabby and unwashed with bits of hay and straw in his fur. Hooray! Here's Toad, he cried. Fancy having you back again. And he began to dance around him. Ratty, Mole and Toad all talked at once and the noise was simply deafening. Be quiet at once! Instantly, everyone was silent. Badger got up from his chair and looking at them severely said very slowly, Now then, I'm going to tell you all a secret. There's an underground passage that leads from the river bank near here, right up into the middle of Toad Hall. Nonsense, said Toad. I know every inch of Toad Hall, inside and out. There's nothing of the sort, I assure you. My young friend, said Badger with great severity, your father showed it to me. Don't let my son know about it, he said. He's a good boy, but he simply can't hold his tongue. If ever he's in a real fix, tell him about the secret passage, but not before. Well, said Toad sulkily, perhaps I am a bit of a talker. But never mind, go on, Badger. How's this passage of yours going to help us? There's going to be a big banquet tomorrow night at Toad Hall, continued Badger. It's the chief weasel's birthday, and all the weasels will be gathered in the dining hall, eating and drinking and laughing and suspecting nothing. No guns, no swords, no sticks, no arms of any sort, whatever. But the sentries will be posted as usual, remarked Rat. Exactly, said Badger, and that's where the passage comes in. That very useful tunnel leads right up under the pantry next to the dining hall. We'll creep out quietly into the pantry cried Mole. With our pistols and swords and sticks, shouted Rat. And rush in upon them, said Badger. 
and whack him and whack him and whack him and whack him and whack him, cried Toad, running around and around and around the room and jumping on the chairs. Very well, said Badger, our plan is settled. So, as it's getting late, all of you go right off to bed at once. We'll make all the arrangements tomorrow. The following night, each animal armed himself with sword, stick and pistol. When finally they were ready, Badger took a lantern in one paw and grasping a great stick with the other, said, Now, follow me. The secret passage, when they found it, was cold and dark and damp and low and narrow. So they groped and shuffled along with their ears pricked up and their paws on their pistols, till at last Badger said, We ought by now to be pretty nearly under the hall. Suddenly they heard people shouting and cheering and stamping their feet on the floor and hammering on the tables. The passage began to slope upwards. They groped a little further. The noise broke out again, quite distinct this time and very close above them. Hooray! 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 they heard. They hurried along the passage till it came to a full stop. They were standing under the trapdoor that led up into the pantry. Now then, boys, said Badger, and the four of them put their shoulders to the trapdoor and gave a great heave. Hoisting each other up, they found themselves in the pantry, with only a door between them and the dining hall. Badger drew himself up, took a firm grip of his stick with both paws, glanced round at his comrades and cried, The hour is come! Follow me! And he flung the door wide open. What a squealing and squeaking and screeching filled the air! Well might the terrified weasels dive under the tables and spring madly up at the windows. Well might the ferrets rush wildly for the fireplace and get hopelessly jammed in the chimney. Well might tables and chairs be upset and glass and china be sent crashing to the floor and the panic of that terrible moment when the four heroes strode into the room. The mighty badger, his whiskers bristling, waved his great cudgel through the air. Mole, black and grim, brandishing a stick and shouting his awful war cry. A mole! A mole! Rat, his belt bulging with weapons of every age and variety, strode into battle, and Toad, frenzied with excitement, swinging his stick above his head, went straight for the chief weasel and sent him flying across the table with one blow. Though they were but four in all, to the panic-stricken weasels the hall seemed full of monstrous animals whooping and flourishing enormous cudgels, and they broke and fled with squeals of terror and dismay, this way and that, through the windows, up the chimney, anywhere to get out of the reach of those terrible sticks. It was soon over. Up and down the whole length of the hall strode the four friends, whacking with their sticks at every head that showed itself. And in five minutes the room was cleared. On the floor lay some dozen or so of the enemy, on whom Mole was busily fitting handcuffs. Badger, resting from his labours, leaned on his stick and wiped his brow. I want some grub. Stir yourself, Toad. Look lively. Toad felt rather hurt that Badger did not tell him what a fine fellow he was and how splendidly he had fought. But he bustled out and so did Rat, and soon they found some jelly, trifle, cold chicken, a tongue and quite a lot of lobster salad. So they had a splendid supper and presently retired to their beds, safe in Toad's ancestral home, won by matchless valour, clever planning and a proper handling of sticks. <laughs>